Hello class, I am Michael Chaduquist and I want to welcome you to Post University Project Management course. Throughout this course, we will be referring to the Project Management Institute, a guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, or PMBOK. By now, you should have your own copy of the PMBOK. When you join PMI as a student member, you will also have access to a digital copy of the PMBOK. PMBOK is not a complete or all-inclusive guide to project management. Rather, it is meant to be used as a guide to the best practices and to establish a common vocabulary used to discuss project management. The course will use lectures, videos, articles, and case studies to explore specific project management methodologies. As you read the PIMBOK, keep in mind you are learning a new language. Three of the terms you will encounter are project lifecycle, phases, and process groups. This lesson will define and clarify these terms. We will start with the project life cycle. The project life cycle provides a basic framework for managing all projects, regardless of the specific work involved. All projects can be mapped to the following life cycle structure, starting the project, organizing and preparing, carrying out the work, closing the project. All projects must have a starting point. An important concept regarding the life cycle of a project is the degree of cost and of staffing associated with the project over the time frame of the project. As the diagram depicts, when the project starts, the cost and staffing are low. As we proceed with starting the project, both cost and staffing increase. Not all projects make it past this stage of the life cycle. In the course of starting a project, the stakeholders may decide the project is too costly, risky, or simply does not fit into the overall goals of their organization. The next stage of the life cycle is the organizing and planning stage. During this stage of the life cycle, cost and staffing undergo a precipitous increase. A manufacturer may spend thousands of dollars designing a new product only to discover the project's cost exceeds their expectations or the competition releases a better product. Costs are very difficult to determine during the starting stage of the project life cycle. Stakeholders may not be fully aware of all the resources, such as cost and time, needed to complete the project until detailed information is developed in the organizing and preparing stage of the project life cycle. After the organizing and preparing stage, the work begins. The majority of a project costs and staffing are associated with this stage of the project life cycle. However, both begin to subside as the work progresses. An obvious but often overlooked and neglected stage of a product's life cycle is closing the project. Both cost and staffing experience a precipitous decrease during this stage of the project's life cycle. The project is now complete. All projects which are executed to completion fit into this basic life cycle structure starting the project, organizing and preparing, performing the work, and closing the project. Stages of a project's life cycle should not be confused with the phases of a project. Phasing is the division of a project into smaller segments to ease the management of the project or to facilitate scheduling issues. Here are a few examples that may clarify this point. IT projects are often divided into three phases, wiring, hardware, and software. In essence, each phase is treated as a separate project. The reason for this is typically each of these phases is carried out by a specialized group of vendors. Also, within the organization, a different manager may be responsible for supervising this work. For example, wiring is the responsibility of the facilities department. Hardware, such as routers, switches, and computers, are the responsibility of the IT department, and software is the responsibility of the MIS, or Management Information Systems Department. Phasing may also be implemented for scheduling issues. Perhaps the organization wants to spread the cost of the project out over three fiscal quarters or even three fiscal years. Likewise, a community service organization may want to implement a new after-school program. They decide to execute the project in three phases, fundraising, training, and implementation. The primary reason for this division is because of the uncertainty of when the funds will be available and when training can be completed. Fundraising can begin immediately. As soon as enough money is raised, some training can begin. As more money is raised, more training can be accomplished. Once the fundraisers meet their objectives, the implementation can begin. The last example is a new manufacturing facility. The project has two phases, building and equipment. Once again, the project is phased because of the highly specialized nature of providing and installing manufacturing equipment. Treating the project as two phases allows the stakeholders to use readily available contractors to construct the building at competitive pricing while working with a specific vendor to implement a physical plant. 
project phases can be implemented sequentially. In the case of the IT project, each phase is completed before the next phase starts because the project was spread out over the course of three years. Notice each phase of the project goes through a complete life cycle. Project phases can also overlap. In our after-school program example, all the phases overlap. Notice each phase of the project goes through a complete life cycle. Also note, at several points in the overall project, three different stages of the life cycle are occurring simultaneously. Within each stage of the life cycle, various processes are performed. The PMBOK refers to these processes as process groups. The process groups align in both name and function with the stages of the life cycle. The diagram shows four process groups. Initiating process group, planning process group, executing process group, and closing process group. The PMBOK also defines a fifth process group, the monitoring and control process group. This is a group of processes that span across the entire life cycle of a project. In other words, a project manager must monitor and control all the processes of a project. To this point, we have depicted the stages of the life cycle as occurring sequentially. However, as with phases, the stages, and therefore the processes that occur within the stages of the life cycle, can occur simultaneously. In practice, the planning and executing processes often overlap. In some cases, such as a design-build project, the planning processes occur concurrently with the executing processes of the project. Notice once again, the processes associated with the monitoring and controlling process group span across all four life cycle process groups. Let's review briefly what we have covered in this lesson. Project life cycle is the natural progression of a project or phase of a project. Phasing is the division of a project into smaller segments to ease the management of the project and to facilitate scheduling issues. Process groups are the processes that take place throughout the life cycle of a project. The five process groups align with the stages of the life cycle, with the exception of monitoring and controlling, which occurs throughout the life cycle of a project. We will discuss these concepts, especially the process groups and the processes that take place within each group, in more depth as the course progresses. At this point, our objective is to understand the vocabulary used by project managers using the PMBOK as a guide. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on the discussion board. I look forward to getting to know you and learn with you.